What's going on, all you Plotaholics fans out here? I'm Brian Tan, and this is another episode of Tan Talks. Joining me today, Katie Salitis. Katie, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. We got we got to talk about this episode. Yeah, absolutely. I signed on for Book of Boba Fett. I was not aware that we were doing a Mandalorian episode. I'm conflicted. I am because I am. on the it's one a- hand, it was a brilliant Mandalorian episode. Absolutely. Where was Boba Fett? He wasn't even in his own show. Fennec Shan was in this episode more than the guy whose the show is named after. And, he, and her, it was a cameo. Yeah, that's literally all it was. This was literally what's been going on with Mando. Well, <laughs> funny you should ask. But it was a great episode. It was a really amazing episode. You know, we got to see what's what Mando's up to after his triumph over a Moff Gideon played beautifully by Giancarlo Esposito and you know Grogu went away with um CGI Luke Skywalker so Mando's by himself again um the 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 Razor Crest is gone but um he he's got the uh he's got the dark saber and this was actually some lore that I forgot about with the dark saber that the dark saber if you if you're not in with the movements it gets heavier. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a callback to, and I remember in the old Star Wars games, they would say that a non-force user cannot use a lightsaber. And I think that might be a part of it. I'm, I'm going to not totally agree with you there because the mm-hmm. first person who wielded it was a Mandalorian and a Jedi. Right. He was both. But it has been wielded by others since then. And it, it's kind of what they kept saying in the episode. Don't fight the blade. The blade knows what yeah. it's doing. So you have to kind of you learn to trust the weapon. And you saw right off the bat, he pulled it out first thing. And what did he do? He cut his damn leg. Dude, that he, was, he was brutal. just slinging it around left that and right. Was... He definitely did not know how to use this weapon. And that was so brutal. But that was such an amazing opening scene. Did like, you see how his limp diminished when yeah. people were around? He was actively controlling his pain. Right. And that just goes to show the amazing character that Din Djarin is. Now, we got to talk about something, too. And and this I can't claim as my own takeaway from it. I, I did watch some of the other YouTube channels that were kind of breaking it down. But there was one that really stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. And and it's he became almost a father in the time he was with Grogu. Yeah, he's and, and that changed him. He's not the same Mandalorian that he was at the very beginning. Right. He's and now not, that Grogu's been taken away, he's missing it, something. He's missing something. He's trying to find himself, which is why he tries to go back to his people. But the the path of that's not going to work, you know, played itself out in this this episode. He can't go back home. He has to move forward. Right. And, and I kind of, and I wanted in, to talk to you about that as well because you could see it in how brutally he killed that guy right in the first scene. Yeah. And then even when he does return to the armor, and there's only three of them left. And he's like he's going off and he fights for his dark saber. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, have you taken off your helmet? Now, technically, he didn't take it off. The droid took it off. Yeah, he didn't show it. his face to anybody. But he goes, yeah, I did. How can I make it right? I think the armorer knew. Mm -hmm. I think she knew. And I think that she knew he was conflicted. It was too convenient for her to ask that question right at the time that he had the guy, you know, by the neck with the vibro blade. Right. It it was like, yeah, okay, you're, you're making it legal for him to walk away without any repercussions. Right. But it was just when she said it, I was like, what? Why why did you say that? Oh, okay. I think that she knew that something wasn't right there and there's more going on. And I think she even knew when he said that he was going after Grogu. Mm -hmm. I think she knew. And she knew that there would be conflict. But shout out to Emily Swallows as well. Even when it's just her voice, I am just intrigued with her speaking of the voice, the counting in the Mandalorian language while she was training him with the sword. So great. Once again, and, and shout out to Pedro Pascal, the body language to make his character come to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see he's getting frustrated. The whole process, he's like, you're really taking me back to the beginning like I'm a young one. 
I know how to use this thing. And she's like, no, nope, you don't know no. how to use that thing. That was the whole point. You see him fall off the edge. Oh, that was, oh, that was so funny. And then he just, <laughs> and she's not even like, you need to blah, blah, blah. And he's just flying up with his jetpack, like, damn it. So he gets back to Tatooine. We run into our favorite junk dealer. Who yes. I, I, I love her on Star Trek. I love her. I love her little droid collection. They're oh. so, they're, they are so fun. And he's like, oh, so you got me a, a Falcon Crest. No, I said I had a replacement. It's like, once again, you're hearing what you want to hear. And, and a nice little callback to um, episode one with the, uh, the the Naboo cruiser. Yep, yep. But now, in pieces. And yeah, just in broken up pieces and custom pieces, which was really, really cool. Now, granted, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I would rather have an actual, sh- like a starship than a, a speeder because- I the same thing too, because if he's going on long trips, I mean, where's he going to sleep? Where's he going to go to the bathroom? Where's he going to store stuff? Yeah, he has no no space for nothing other than to sit there and for however long space travel takes. Right. That would like, really not be comfortable. Right. But, but like, he- they hollowed out the droid port because you know who's going back there. Yeah, that's Grogu's seat. Yeah. But I love the whole- everything that they went through as far as building it together and working together with it. And, oh yeah, I dated, I dated a Jawa. Very hairy. I'm like, wow. That was so funny. And so and she like really went for it in the speaking Jawa. I was like, oh my goodness. There were a lot of Easter eggs in this episode. Tons. Tons. Some of them that were like, whoa, like completely like threw me. And I had to, to go back and look at it. Is that really true? So the yeah. Jawa bring in that, that, um, that big metal pipe. Right. I Same mean, metal pipe that was used in uh, A New in a, Hope. In, in A New Hope, factor. yeah. Yeah. What? That would make sense. And it's like all of these callbacks to showing that we have, as of course, as Odette can't seem to just leave me alone and let me the so. The astromech droid is the same yeah. one that had the bad motivator. And if you watch, right. he's got the burn spots around him. Yes, there yes. Hole. As much as I'm, I'm sort of jagged and clowned about this being, you know, Mandalorian season three prequel episode, the previous episode did set this episode up perfectly. I know a guy. Here's the thing. If we would have done an episode where Fennec Shan just shows back up at the um, palace with Din Djarin, where the hell's he been? And then we're waiting six, seven, eight months to see this episode. So as much as I'm sort of clowning it, I'm kind of glad we got this now. No, I'm, I'm, I get that. And I'm not mad. My expectations were not met in the way that I wanted them to be met. But I was very much happy with the episode we were given. Right. I think the conflict comes in. Book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett doesn't show up. That's where the main conflict comes in. So I think we're only two episodes away from the uh, season finale. I don't know what to expect in this next one because honestly, now I feel invested in Mando's story. Same here. I, I'm, yeah. I seriously think that we're not going to have Mando in this upcoming episode. This is going to be Boba Fett and crew prepping for the battle. And then Mando shows up in the season finale. So we're not going to see him go to, to Grogu. I, I don't think we're going to see that until the Mandalorian season three. Oh man. I think you're going to get pissed off fans for that. As I excited think so. as everyone was after this episode. And I mean, you can go to Reddit, you can go to any of the forums out there. The fans really, really liked this and everybody loves Grogu. So if you tease them and then don't pay it off. So do you think then maybe this upcoming episode, maybe we'll get about, what, 10, 15 minutes of Mando, Grogu, and then Mando going back to Tatooine? I, I think you, you almost have to because you, you've got to pay off what you set up. Is it safe to say, too, that Mando is a more popular character than Boba is now? Because the season has been so slow? Yes. Okay. Um, I think the biggest complaint that I've heard, uh, you know, just around the different forums online is that it's, they, they have this image of Boba being such a badass, but he has not been the badass for most of the time here. Yes, he has been a strong willed character. Yes, he has shown that he has, has grown as a, a person. But no one cares about that. They want to see fights. And that's so, what we've been getting from Jin, Jin, um, Jin Darn. Exactly. Even when he's getting one. his butt kicked. I love that, that he is still young enough in his career 
he gets his ass whooped and he suffers the consequences of it. That's, that's good to see. Right. And to go back to that point I was making at the very beginning. And again, I didn't discover this. I, I had uh, read it on one of the, the spoilers and the discussions about the show, but that, that connection to him being like a, a father who's lost his child. That's that's really changing his arc. It's changing oh, yeah. him as a as a person, as a character. I think he may use the dark saber and actually try to rebuild Mandalore at some point. I think he might take that mantle up because he he's now seeing what it is to have people that you trust, to have people that you connect with, to have people care with, and and I think that's ultimately where his arc is is leading him through this pain right now of loss. And and I liked how during that scene when they were back in the uh, the ring world where she was telling the story about the dark saber and the loss of, of Mandalore, the night of a thousand tears. And they were showing us, they're not going to show something that takes a lot of time to build and create if they're not going to use it in some way. So I think we're going right. to be revisiting Mandalore, whether it is for him to redeem himself in the waters under the mines or whether it is to actually take up the mantle. Now that he has, he, he earned the sword. He won it by creed. Like they said, mm -hmm. So that could be his, you know, ultimately his arc. It's going to take a while to get there. Right. All right, guys. So only two more episodes to go. And that finale is going to be huge because you can't have a slow buildup and then drop the finale. And I don't think Favreau is going to do that. I think Favreau is such a great storyteller that he's, he's going to give us something huge and keep us talking. We're going to look back in 2025 at this first season of Book of Boba Fett and say this was probably one of the best setups period and i think that this is going to be a setup that we're going to see when we start breaking apart obi-wan i think that we're going to see something similar can't wait for that oh but obi-wan's going to be awesome so listen if you like what you heard hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit the little bell icon so you get notified for all of our videos with that being said she's katie salitis i'm brian tan this is tan talks we'll see you next week